Hey everyone, this is Justin from Justin Carl Audio, and today I want to help you make your podcast sound more professional by showing you a helpful set of tools called high pass and low pass filters. We're going to go over what they are, what they do, and how they're going to benefit your podcast. This should be a shorter video as understanding high pass and low pass filters is pretty simple and it's actually easy to implement them as well. The real challenge is remembering the names for which is which. Still to this day, I find myself pausing to make sure that I'm saying the correct name of the one that I'm actually referring to, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Before we begin, I just wanna let you know that there is a link in the description below that has a free PDF with even more information on how to make your podcast sound professional. The free guide contains five quick and actionable steps that will help you get the professional sounding podcast that you want and that your listeners deserve. So high pass and low pass filters live in the world of EQ or equalization, which are the parameters that give us the ability to adjust the frequency of a sound source and ultimately its tonal quality. Now, a fancy word for that is timbre. When you use a high pass and low pass filter, you are essentially designating a range of frequencies to cut out or attenuate while letting all of the other frequencies pass through. So when you use a high pass filter, you're cutting out the low frequencies and letting the rest of the high frequencies pass through, hence high pass filter. And when you use a low pass filter, you're cutting out the high frequencies and you're letting the low frequencies pass through, hence low pass filter. Is this making sense? Are you following along? Good. Now let me confuse you just a little bit. Another way high pass and low pass filters are referred to is low cut and high cut filters. It's still talking about the same thing, but with language that just refers to the inverse action of what I just explained. So a low cut filter will cut the low frequencies and a high cut filter will cut the high frequencies. So in a sense, a high pass filter is a low cut filter and a low pass filter is a high cut filter. It gets a little confusing, I know. Feel free to play that back if you didn't catch it right away. But don't worry, from here on out, I'm only gonna to refer to them as high pass and low pass filters. And I would suggest you use that language as well. I only wanted to bring this up in case someone else referred to them as high cut and low cut filters. You would at least know what they're talking about. Now, a high pass filter, remember, cuts out the low frequencies and lets the high frequencies pass through. This is what we're gonna really be focusing on today because it's most helpful in a podcast scenario. And here is why. So the human voice is made up of a frequency range. Every voice is slightly different. Therefore, the specifics of this frequency range will vary. However, a good rule of thumb is that the human voice lives somewhere in the range of 80 hertz at the low end and somewhere around 16 kilohertz at the very top. Now, the frequency range of human hearing extends from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So if the human voice doesn't live below 80 hertz, but we can still hear things below 80 hertz, then what is being picked up in that frequency range on your microphone while you record your podcast? Well, potentially a lot, mainly depends on your recording environment. Now, if you're in a studio with proper acoustic treatment, then you may not need to worry about this area as much, although you should take a listen. Now, if you're recording a podcast from home or in any other area that wasn't made for recording, then you definitely need to take a listen as to what's going on in this frequency range. Some examples of what can get picked up in that frequency range are, say, the rumble of vehicles passing by your window, or maybe a car outside playing loud music, or even the rumble of your refrigerator. No, do not record your podcast in the kitchen. Never do it. We can have a whole video on why it's a bad idea to record your podcast in a kitchen. Some other things that can get picked up in this frequent range are pretty much anything that sends a vibration or a tremor into your microphone. If someone bangs on the table or steps loud enough to send vibrations through your microphone, these all can result in low frequency rumbles while playing back your audio. And a high pass filter is the perfect way to take care of this. Now, there are three good ways to apply a high pass filter. The first one is through an EQ plugin in your DAW or recording software, and it can be applied at the 
post-production or mixing phase when you are done recording. I find that this is the most useful for me because I can set the exact parameters of the high pass filter. Now we're gonna dive into the specifics of this in a bit, but there are actually two other ways to apply a high pass filter during the tracking stage while you're recording your podcast. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video and we'll go over those as well. So the podcast that I have here is called Yeah, No, Yeah. It's a show that I record on a regular basis. Uh, there's a link in the description below if you want to check it out. So what I'm going to do is place the Pro Tools stock 7-band EQ plugin on this audio track here. The 7-band EQ just refers to the fact that you can manipulate 7 bands or frequency ranges with this particular EQ. These five colored sections here represent five of the seven bands that we have control over. Can you spot the other two? Have a look right over here. You see HPF, LPF. There you go. That's high pass filter, low pass filter, and that makes band number six and seven. First, I want to show you how the high pass and low pass filters operate differently from the standard filters on here. So if I take one of these regular filters, right, I have a few things to choose from. I can pick the main frequency. You can see that the yellow ball up there that correlates to this yellow section of changes when I move the frequency knob. I can adjust the gain or how much or little I take away or add to the frequency. And then I can adjust the Q up here, which essentially just narrows or widens the range of frequencies that you're going to affect. Now, the high pass and low pass filters operate in a slightly different manner. As you can see, I only have two parameters to manipulate, the Q and the frequency. We no longer have the option of boosting or adding frequencies. With this type of filter, we can only cut or attenuate the frequencies. But that is exactly what we want, and executing is dead simple. I said before that the low end of the human voice frequency range is about 80 hertz. If I want to get rid of all the frequencies from 80 hertz and below, all I need to do is set the parameter to 80 hertz. So I'm going to turn the low pass filter on, and I'm going to adjust the frequency till it says... 80 hertz. There you go. And that's pretty much it. Now, you may be asking what the Q knob does. Well, it's pretty simple. It lets you adjust how aggressive the frequency cutoff is. Now, if I have it set all the way over here, it becomes almost completely vertical. That indicates that the frequency cutoff is happening almost immediately below 80 hertz. Now, if I set the Q this way, you'll see that the line is more horizontal and less vertical. That indicates that the frequency roll-off is a little softer and it will still let some frequencies below 80 hertz through. So what is the correct setting? Well, that's all up to your audio. Depending on the source material, these numbers will change quite a bit. A typical male voice may reach all the way down to 100 hertz, while the female voice may only extend down to 150 hertz or so. As I always say, use your ears while making these decisions. Now, it's very important not to cut off too much low end frequency. If you do, you can wind up with a very thin sounding voice. Take a listen. And another thing that I'll say that was a huge misconception of mine is there was so much about her like lip syncing and not really being a performer. And what you lose, what you don't know if you haven't watched her old videos is that she is a very good singer. And that a lot of her, and it's like uh, something I've thought about a lot with. So as you notice, the further along that I move the frequency up the graph, the thinner her voice became. So what I usually do when setting my high pass filters, I will go extreme on purpose and then back it off slowly. When the voice returns to sounding normal, I know that I hit the sweet spot. Take a listen. And another thing that I'll say that was a huge misconception of mine is there was so much about her like lip syncing and not really being a performer. And what you lose, what you don't know if you haven't watched her old videos is that she is a very good singer. Yeah. And that a lot of her, and it's like uh, something I've thought about you can also hit play and compare with the bypass button. And another thing that I'll say that was a huge misconception of mine is there was so much about her like lip syncing and not really being a performer. And what you lose, what you don't know if you haven't watched her old videos is that she is a... As long as the tone of the voice isn't changing drastically, then you're good. Now, let's talk about the other two ways to apply a high pass filter. The first one is on your recording interface. Now, not every interface has the option of a high pass filter, but if it does, it'll probably look something like this. 
This is my interface at my home studio. It's an Audion ID44 and the high pass filter kind of looks like a little hockey stick. And it's meant to indicate the roll off of the low frequency range. Looks just like the EQ that we saw inside of Pro Tools. If I want to activate the high pass filter, all I have to do is flip the switch. Now, if you're going to select the high pass filter on a piece of gear like this, you don't have the option of choosing the frequency range that you cut at. I looked up the tech specs for this interface and it says that it is set at 100 hertz. So when I flip the switch, it's going to cut out frequencies from 100 hertz and below. As long as you engage the switch before you hit record, your recording will already have those unwanted frequencies taken out when you start the editing and mixing phase. The third and final way to apply a high pass filter is directly on a microphone. Just like the interface, not many microphones come with this option. Some that I can think of off the top of my head is the Shure SM7B, the AKG C414, and the Neumann U87. Now, these all fall into the mid to high range of pricing, so don't necessarily go out and grab one of these just to use the high pass filter. A new SM7B is around $400, the AKG is around $1,100, and the Neumann usually sits at a cool three grand. All of these could be used in a podcasting scenario, but if you're going to get one of these, I would recommend the Shure SM7B. The reason is, is that it is a dynamic mic as opposed to a condenser mic. And if you're recording outside of a professional studio, it's going to pick up the least amount of background noise. Now, the differences between a dynamic mic and a condenser mic is has enough information for video by itself. Just like the high pass filter on an interface, the frequency at which the high pass filter is set is selected by the microphone manufacturer. You're going to have to check with them depending on what mic you own. Make sure the high pass filter is engaged before you start recording, and that's one less thing you have to worry about in the post production stage. Well, there you go, high pass filters. Pretty simple, right? If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. It lets me know that these videos are working for you. I want you to let me know in the comments how you use a high pass filter. Do you use the plugin in a DAW? Do you engage it on your interface, or do you have a microphone and you set it there? If you want more information on how to make your podcast sound more professional right now, click the link in the description below and grab your free PDF, which contains five tips towards a professional sounding podcast. In today's saturated podcast market, professional sounding audio is a necessity. You work very hard on your content, but don't let it stop there. Make sure the audio sounds great so you can offer your listeners the entire package. The PDF is an easy read and the tips are things that you can implement immediately on your very next episode. So don't miss out on that. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.